Hello friends, today I have to discuss with you an, an ode to death by Daud Kamal. It is a summary and critical analysis. First of all, I have to tell you about Daud Kamal. Who was Daud Kamal? Daud Kamal was a Pakistani writer. Uh, he was born on January 4, 1935 in Aptabad. His earliest inspiration came from Bond Hall. Cambridge School in Srinagar, Kashmir, and he died in 1987. Uh, the tone of this uh, order, this poem, you know, to death is pessimistic. So this is a lyrical poem. Uh, a lyrical poem is a formal type of poetry which expresses personal emotions or feelings, typically spoken in the first person. Uh, this is a lyrical poem in which Daud Kamal has described his personal feelings and thoughts. The main theme of this poem is the ultimate reality of death. That death is sure. In the opening lines of this poem, Daud Kamal quotes the words of Conrad Aiken. Uh, it is very different that a poem starts with a uh, quotation of someone, uh, some other writer. Uh, words uh, of Conrad Aiken that our death can occur in the mere lifting of a single eyebrow. He tries to broaden our minds by making us aware of the certainty of death. In the beginning, he also shares the viewpoints of E.E. E. Cumming that death is more certain but the needles of the clock don't stop for anyone. Undoubtedly, Human beings love their family and friends and they cry a lot when someone from them leaves this world. But with the passage of time, we see a gradual decrease in their emotional feelings and sentiments for their loved one. As time is a great healer, so they start to continue their normal routines as they were living before. The poet further says that as every particle of carbon has a dream to become a diamond, same is the case with human beings. They are all following their dreams to achieve more success and money for their pleasant lifestyle. Carbon and dust, carbon, dust and diamond is used as metaphor here. But every carbon particle dream doesn't come true. Carbon particle is used uh, in metaphor as human. Human beings should not be so sure that all their dreams would come true because death can take away anyone's life at any time. Death is like a cruel monster who is going to eat people in a single bite. People are working so hard to live a luxurious life, forgetting that their life and this world are both fragile and temporary. We all know that this life is tem temporary, but we are involved in this love and world. He says that pomegranate, pom pomegranate, is the world and its seeds are the high hopes and luxuries of this world. Is the second metaphor he used. People are blindly following their dreams, but there would come a day when this world would come to an end. There is no need to work so in insanely and passionately for a world that is nothing more than a spider web. Its existence can be turned into complete chaos whenever destiny wants it to be. In the next line, Daud Kamal makes a comparison of big pine tree that was blasted by last year's thunderbolt with burned match sticks in his ashtray. He compared, he compared huge and small, but also he compared poor and rich he just want to say about the poor and rich he's not really talking about tree and made sticks he says that a pine tree is very big 
and these matchsticks are very small but they have the same ending as they both have tasted the flavor, flavor of death. Similarly, death shows no mercy for any person, whether he is a rich businessman or a poor man living on the street, whether uh, it is uh, Muhammad bin Qasim or it is Hitler. Then the poet addresses the person who is on his bed death, saying that he can feel his sinking pulse. It is assumed that hair and bonds take more time to dissolve, so the poet asks this question, that how much time your bonds and hair would take to dissolve in the grave? Our human existence is the combination of the body and soul. The love for this existence has made us forget about the ultimate reality of death. The relationship between death and life is like the relationship between our eyes and tears. We don't know when our eyes would bring tears. Similarly, we have no idea when our soul will move toward death. He has beautifully depicted a picture of the grave. Where there are islands of naked rocks and silence everywhere. Everyone is sleeping peacefully and there is no space for grief and tensions as people had to face them when they were alive. Here the island in silence depict danger and fear. But he also, in the second line, he also uh, point out uh, Islamic view, point of view of uh, uh, grave. That if you are a good person, your deeds are good, uh, you will be in good condition will be in um, rest but if you if you were uh, bad your deeds are bad so you will be in tension and grief he then remembers his past life when he himself was involved in some bad habits for which he feels guilty whenever he gets the flashback of these memories he tries to think reasonably saying that he should forget all those unpleasant things which are making him feel guilty because he can't do anything now. So the best way is to forgive and forget but whatever is bothering him from his past experiences. In the last four lines, he addresses himself and wonders if he is going near towards death or death is coming towards him. Whether he was on the floating island or his life was on the shore. He says that no one knows either his life is a deceiver or death is the deceiver. But one thing is for sure. One our death is the ultimate reality which should not be forgotten merely for the sake of this temporary world.